Malaria kills about 1.1 million people every year, most of them children in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, an old method to prevent the disease is making a comeback. Children in Mali, Senegal, and other African countries are swallowing malaria pills throughout the rainy season when malaria normally peaks. For decades, public health experts warned against just this strategy, known as chemoprevention, because it will cause widespread drug resistance. But the alternative, a massive number of deaths every year, seems worse. I wanted to know how African mothers, scientists, and health workers felt about the intervention. So I traveled to Mali to talk with them and to watch how the pills are distributed to thousands of kids during the rainy season. On the day before the rollout, small groups of health workers congregate for training sessions. They receive a backpack with anti-malaria pills and tools to dissolve the pills in water. Here, the medical supervisor explains that these pills are for healthy children. They want to save the gold standard malaria medication for when the children fall sick. On the day of the rollout, Mothers and children arrive by foot and by donkey cart from the farms where they work. They gather outside of a one-room schoolhouse, today a temporary clinic. Inside, the health workers mash up the pills, plop them in water, and hand the bitter yellow liquid to children to swallow. It's September, and children in this village have been taking the pills once every month since the rainy season began in July. Normally at this time, children suffering from malaria will fill hospitals. But with chemo prevention, most children remain healthy and their moms don't need to worry. Throughout the day, community health workers repeat a mantra, better to prevent than to treat. Women like uh, malaria prevention for their kids because uh, they benefit so much from it. It. That's what he said. Because uh, in addition of uh, saving money, because they won't have to take them to the hospital, they also have much time to take care of their field, the farm work, and not uh, being attending their sick child at home. Last year, the World Health Organization recommended chemo prevention for countries like Mali, Senegal, and Nigeria places where malaria mainly strikes during the rainy season. The intervention has been a decade in the making because health officials were concerned about side effects and about the risk of resistance. Those fears are actually justifiable, but over the past decade, scientists have shown that the treatment reduces malaria cases by more than 80%. The benefits outweigh the costs, says Badara Sise, who helped run the largest trial in Senegal. I don't think that it will be appropriate to not uh, give <laughs> disease drugs to those who need them because of uh, potential resistance. We have to use them and at the same time we have to monitor continuously. To keep tabs on resistance, researchers will analyze spots of blood collected from malaria patients to see if the parasites have evolved mutations to overcome the therapy. One of these researchers, Alison Dicko, is thrilled to see the intervention take off. Compared to the current tool that we have for malaria control, it's, it's really ranked very high. And when you have bed net and when you have other interventions. So we believe that what we really needed now is to implement this very quickly. The science behind chemo prevention is simple, and in studies, it's clearly powerful. Now, the main obstacle is what some people in the aid world call the last mile challenge. It's logistical hurdles. It's why polio has been so hard to eliminate, even though the vaccine has been around for decades. I'm really optimistic that we can make an impact. But we need a strong commitment of our medical authorities. And maybe that's what we like most. There are 25 million children who stand to gain from chemo prevention if only health workers can reach them.